Hello everyone, my name is Clementine, welcome back to Clementine Creative, I am back with another video. Uh, last video we left off with, you know, complete tier 1, we learned how to draw the sphere and the cube, and today we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to try to digitally paint an arm. Uh, so without further ado, let's go explaining what we'll talk about in this episode. The very first objective that we have on our list is called simplifying a complex shape. Uh, so an arm is a complex shape. Uh, it's basically you can already tell that if uh, an arm is let's say very built in, it has a you know very defined muscles. It's called muscles, I guess. Uh, it has a lot of shapes, a lot of complex shapes that uh, when you're starting you know starting out in digital painting, they might be very scary to tackle. It's something that sh maybe you give it a try. But a lot of times you're you're thinking I'm gonna draw something else just because you're afraid to get into it, get into it because you're not you know you're not uh, you're not 100 sure you'll be able to pull it off. It's a gamble for you, so I'm going to show you how you you can simplify the shapes and that will make your life a whole lot easier because you just won't have that scare anymore because you'll know oh it's a series of simple shapes. So uh, the next thing on our objective list is complex shape analyzing. What we'll be doing is we'll be uh, analyzing the complex shapes uh, that construct and uh, build an arm. And, uh, you know, we'll analyze it and we'll try to, uh, again, simplify the, the complex shapes that, you know, uh, shapes that create uh, an arm. So that'll be basically analyzing it uh, and just seeing how, how far you can stylize a certain uh, shape, you know, into helping you understand how the light will work on them later on. The third objective on this list is complex shape shading. So this is where we are finally going to do uh, some actual work, just like last time. Um, this one says basic, so we're gonna apply basic shadows and ba you know, basic light. And in the next advanced one, we're gonna you know basically add bounce light and add all the other things. Uh, so you know, without further ado. Uh, let's just move on to this entire thing and, you know, let's learn something new. So here we have a drawing of an arm. Uh, we can see this arm has a lot of muscles, which also creates a very, uh, a lot of shapes that are, uh, very difficult to, when you're starting out, figure out on how light will work on them. Um, you're basically afraid that you won't be, you know, you won't get them in and then everything will look bad. But it's actually not as hard as you might think. Now, uh, this arm does have quite a lot of muscles and arm generally has a lot of muscles and if you're really like able to define the muscles in your arm uh, we see a lot of different bulges now some of these muscles are not 100% correct um, but it's still entertainment so it doesn't have to be 100% correct uh, but more or less it's there this is generally how an arm looks like and I think we can all agree on that so let's complete our first objective which is to simplify this shape Okay, so here we have a simplified sketch of an arm. Uh, we can see it's very basic construction. Uh, we have the circle here, or, or it can also be a sphere. And then, you know, connecting to that, if we kind of connect it like so. Uh, you know, we draw the top of the cylinder is the first cylinder. And then we have the second cylinder right here. So let's go again. First cylinder, and then the second cylinder. And this is the entire arm. It's very simple, just two big cylinders. And then we also have a sketch uh, uh, of a hand, uh, very basic. That one we don't need to worry about that much right now. What we really want to concentrate is this area here because uh, what happens is a lot of lumps of muscle and fat and skin just get put on top of it and then we need to render all of this out. So let's turn on the layer with the arm and here we can kind of compare uh, we can see that uh, if I turn down the opacity for the arm, arm a little bit, um, we can see where the you know two pieces intersect. It's very simple, and um, all we now have to do is use what on the sketch we have to shade uh, our actual arm. So we can see that you can very easily simplify an arm, uh, which at first looks very complex, but really it it's just a series a series of cylinders and spheres. So now let's try to analyze the shapes that construct an actual arm. So we simplified it to a cylinder. Now we're going to try to analyze the shapes that come at the top of this cylinder. 
So here we are now again looking at this arm and what we're going to try to do is we are going to try to, um, you know, basically analyze what shapes construct this arm. So the first obvious choice uh, or, you know, observe, if you observe would be this one right here. So the shoulder is obviously a sphere. It's constructed by a sphere. It follows that shape. The only thing this sphere ha or a sphere does have, I guess, it's a little bit of a... Um, I don't know, better of a triangle there. So that's all it does have. So what about this bicep? What is this bicep really? Well, this bicep is just a cylinder. See that? It's just a cylinder. We have a cylinder here, so that's the bicep. And then we have the tricep right here in the back. What is this? Another cylinder. There we go. Just another cylinder put in. Again, here another cylinder. This is the muscle right below the tricep. Again, we have the forearm. The forearm itself is a huge cylinder. We don't even need to do anything here. Uh, but any sort of muscle that comes out is really just a small cylinder. See that? So if, if you start to think about it this way, that the arm is, you know, arm is constructed just mainly out of cylinders, uh, it becomes way easier to shade everything in. Now that we analyze this arm, we can see that all of its muscles are actually created by cylinders. And we didn't need to, you know, analyze this thing for long. It was very obvious as soon as we start drawing in the cylinders. So now that we know that this arm is actually constructed of a bunch of cylinders, it's going to be much easier to shade, um, you know, basically to, to digitally paint this arm. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to put down a layer of dark gray color, which is going to act as the darkest point uh, on my arm. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to apply light on your arm to make it look like it's, you know, three-dimensional, just by simply applying the same rules as you do to a cylinder. So let's get to that. So I finally painted this in. Uh, you didn't have to watch me do that real time. It was, it was time lapse, and uh, hopefully you have a drawing of an arm on your own. If not, you can just download it from the internet uh, or something like that. But first, let's talk about how to, you know, how to go about doing this. So the way I always do it is I select the darkest color, which is, you know, I won't have to worry about any shadows. And now I take my brightest color, or more or less my brightest color. It doesn't have to be the brightest. Uh, just for the beginning, we're gonna take slightly darker than you know the brightest and what we do now is We shade this exactly like we would a cylinder just down the middle, you know the cylinder if uh, I draw one and I shade it uh, Because you know just in case you don't know how that looks like uh, Let me draw one really quickly. So here we have a cylinder, right? a very quick like cylinder and then I'm gonna color it in with the darkest color, I guess, which I'm gonna make it, you know, this one. Um, here we go. Uh, let me just do this. All right, so here we go. Uh, let's say that this is the darkest color. Now we take our brightest color and we just simply put in the light. Now, obviously, the darkest color could be a little bit darker than what I uh, initially chose. But there you go, a basic idea of how a cylinder is shaded. So now that we know how a cylinder is shaded, how do we go about sh uh, shading an arm? You know, it's not even the same. It doesn't look the same. It's far more organic. So how do we do it? Well, we just pretend that the entire arm is created out of cylinders. And we go down the middle. You know, let's say the first we pick the bicep. And we go down the middle and we shade it like we did the cylinder. So let me just make opacity a little bit less on that and just slowly do it. So I'm taking a soft brush here. Usually I use my square square brush for this kind of thing, but um, there we go. Let me just isolate that. There we go. So that is already almost done. Now we take the brightest color and we really emphasize the shape here. We can take almost white. Here we go. So. The next step is to also do everything else. So we have the tricep again, down the middle, just like you would a cylinder. 
what about the shoulder well a shoulder is essentially a uh, sphere so we you know shade it just like we did the sphere yesterday in the in the friday's video And now we take, you know, the forearm and all the little shapes here, you know, all the little muscles. We shape them in, you know, just as we would shade in a cylinder. Again, as well, these parts too, you know, just like we did a cylinder. Also here. And here. And then the entire arm also needs to be shaded or, you know, lit up or however you want to call this like an actual cylinder because the entire arm also is a sh cylinder so here we go also do that little part there and there and then the knuckles kinda have the same thing going on you wanna make the entire arm a little bit bright there we go so here we can see the arm being, you know, shaded in, however you want to call it, shaded or uh, painted. Um, but it's very basic. What you want to do is, you know, paint it to where you don't have to see the line art anymore. So this is going to be our next goal. We're going to start paint over the line art and hopefully get over that. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is how you refine those shadows. So here we go. Now all I want to do is you just refine the shadows that are already there so right here um, you just refine the shadow add more you know take some away very simple so this is really just applying shadow applying light again and you know a process that takes uh, some time you want to maybe make the shadows smaller here but take a darker shadow here where the arm kind of has a, a lot of muscle here and it's, it kind of meets the bicep the shoulder meets the bicep we add a little extra here and then you know add some of those um, muscle fiber shadows so here we go and wherever there's whenever wherever there's a you know a bulge in that's where you want to add shadow so this is already refining it a bit but this is still you know pretty basic again this is a process that does require some time uh, but it, requir it requires even more practice but uh, you know with time with you know practicing enough these are the things that you'll eventually get down and it's much more fun doing it then you know when you already have a bit of a, you know a bit of experience under your belt it gets much easier much easier so here I'm just gonna refine the arm for a bit there we go but uh, you know a lot of this kind of stuff is just uh, pure practice. I've put a lot of hours in, uh, you know, in learning how to paint myself, uh, and I can tell you it is going to take a long time. Uh, but when you when you get it done, you know, when you learn how to finally do it, it's very satisfying to paint because you are way more confident uh, in your painting, and uh, that's when this, the fun really starts. You know, you begin to see. Uh, the good side about you know painting so really all you want to do is start adding just more light places add more light here so really just following the rule of you know uh, of there being cylinder shapes and that's how we kind of get it down but this is a kind of process that does take some time and a lot of practice like I'm and this is something that I won't be able to stress enough uh, this is the kind of you know thing that you really need to take serious uh, it doesn't come overnight you know digital painting is uh, you're gonna have to learn it the reason why you know drawing so well is probably because you did it most of your life and even if you're not that good at drawing uh, digital painting is still something you can pick up and not be able to draw that good
So there we go. So now we have that basic, you know, shading more or less in place. I want to just get rid of some of these lines a little bit more. There we go. And uh, now what I want to do is I'm going to take this to the next level. But if you came this far, if you just followed what I said, imagine that these are more or less, um, these are, you know, just cylinders and try to simplify the shape a little bit. Then you're going to be able to take it, you know, the next step, which next step is um, advanced complex shape shading. So let's move on to that. Okay, so here we are in the complex uh, shape shading. Uh, advanced version. This is where we add bounce light and we just enhance the hell out of this arm. But for the beginning, basic shading is you know okay, and that's where you should stop and then you know in, you know just work on that, but slowly improving and just adding more on top of what you already have. So for now, I'm gonna show you some techniques. I can't really tell you what exactly to do here. This is then more observation of how it is, you know, how other people do it and how it is in real life. So I'm going to talk about some of the things that I'm thinking and, you know, hopefully you'll get it. So I'm just adding light now to the place uh, uh, which supposedly captures a lot of it. And I'm trying to get rid of the lines and really just try to have everything be defined by, uh, by shadows and light, you know, because that's how... That's how, uh, that's what digital painting uh, and, you know, painting in general is all about. It's all about light and shadow complementing each other and um, creating a surface. Uh, something that is recognizable later on. So, I'm just adding light in the places that I believe is necessary. Uh, and you can see me on top adding more and more light. Again, you know, a process that requires practice, but uh, uh, it's something that'll take quite some time to, you know, figure out. Uh, I know, I know, it took me a long time to figure it out. Even, you know, watching all tutorials, uh, if you don't do it, it's meaningless. So I really suggest after you're done, or even while watching this video or any kind of other tutorial video, uh, just you know, go and practice. You know, don't stop, not even for a second. Even if you uh, go to watch one of my videos and, you know, don't justify video watching for not doing any actual work. The actual work is what will uh, bring results, not my videos. My videos are just there to help you get into it. Uh, but the actual work, sadly, <laughs> needs to be done by you. That's just how it works. So here now I'm going to start add, uh, add with adding the bounce light. Uh, first I add some, sh uh, some shading here. Uh, where we have the muscle on the shoulder. That's what I'm going to add, but I'm already adding the bounce light there. The bounce light also comes in here. And, you know, just adding it. As we can see, the bounce light, the back is getting lit up here a little bit. Let me just define these shadows here a little bit more. Again, trying to have only shadows and lights, no lines. I don't want the lines to make this painting. I want it to be, uh, you know, the light and uh, shadows. That's the whole point. So here we go. These kind of videos are, uh, at the same time, they're so fun to make, but at the same time, they're so frustrating because I wish there was like a, you know, a secret way to just be, you know, just say, hey, this is how you do it. And then, you know, once you know it, uh, you'd be able to do it. But it's it's not something that works that way. It's, you know, a lot of practice. And uh, practice makes perfect. So if you've got the motivation, hopefully you do. Uh, just all you have to do is practice and eventually you'll get it done. Like, believe me, it's possible. I've done it in two years. I've come from zero experience. I remember when I couldn't do anything into you know this which i think is pretty amazing um how far you can get with sheer hard work uh and uh, commitment to something uh, you can get very far and that's uh, really what everything in life is all about so uh, this kind of thing is just going to require a lot of practicing but hopefully you get some tips on how i do it so you're basically just seeing me now apply shadow 
uh, where there were lines before, uh, lines before, and just uh, you know, getting the shape slowly out, you know, uh, to the recognizable level, uh, rendering them out, bringing them out, making everything look three-dimensional. Now, as I'm saying, you know, as I'm saying all of this, you might be thinking, well, it's easy for you because you kind of get it. It's not as easy for us, or for at least for me, or for whoever it is that you know, for you who don't get it. Uh, and believe me, I know how you feel, because I, when I started doing this, didn't feel it, didn't understand anything. Uh, the more I watched the videos, I was like, well, it looks easy, but uh, when you give it a try, it just doesn't work out. And well, uh, later, you know, after. A shit ton of practice you learn it's all about doing it so yeah so I'm just gonna patiently do this for a little bit longer but then we'll go and wrap this video up uh, but you know just trying to get these shadows in there hopefully uh, creating something that will look nice so now I want to add in the Wayne and a little shadow here not that's too strong just a soft shadow indication maybe you know and for when you want to do a veins a good tip is to actually use the lightest color like almost white maybe uh, just make it lighter than the actual skin and you will see it'll pop out like a vein it'll look like there's a vein there so here we go see that kind of looks like there's a vein uh, going down across the arm right so that's how you do wanes. You just uh, take a lighter color and pull it through, make it look like a vein. So now let's uh, work a little bit more on the on the shoulder area here. right here add some of that extra muscle uh, muscle in indication you know like he's really buff if you ever uh, saw pictures of Frank Madrano on the internet and that is a man with some muscles man <laughs> He's got really nice muscles, so uh, a good a good way to also analyze or just study how how to uh, shape some, like shade something or paint something is to actually study it. That's how I do a lot of my um, my work. You know, I just studied how light applies it in on it in real life, and then I try to do it on my own. So now I'm just gonna define the arm a little bit more, and we'll call this one done. Um, uh, I do feel a little bit bad because there's no, you know, easy way to say uh, how you do digital painting. It's just a lot of practice, and practice is something that's uh, a lot of times very hard to do. You don't feel like it. Uh, for me, it never was that much of a problem because I really, really like digital painting and uh, and art in general. So I always found it amusing to do it it never felt like you know chores or anything like that it felt you know it was just fun and I, I did it anyways so if i wouldn't be doing that i'd be drawing manga you know so that I, I would be doing something um so for me it wasn't and there's there's plenty of people like that uh, uh if it does feel like a chore to you um uh, maybe this is not for you i would say uh i don't think it's good if doing this feels like a chore even if it's more or less a homework uh, I always thought that this was fun uh, this kind of stuff you know just painting randomly here it was always very nice uh, and I don't regret doing it now because after some time it really does you know you show improvements and that's really what it's all about if you see my if you hear my cat she's just meowing again looking for attention like she always does uh, so now I'm gonna light it up places a little bit and that'll be the it for this arm 
Um, now I know that this video may have not been the best help ever, uh, but again, it's very very hard to to just give you an easy answer on how how it's done. Uh, a lot of practice is involved, and uh, I'm sure that anyone can, uh, if they so wish, achieve it. So here it is, my completed piece. I hope it helped you. Uh, I know that these kind of videos are very hard uh, for me to make because I feel, you know, when I do a video like this, I really want, you know, for someone to generally pull something out of it. And a lot of people have an expectation because I also had those expectations that when you're watching a video, you'll pull some magical knowledge that once you watch the video, you'll be able to do something. But sadly, it's not like this. So it would be faulty of me to advertise this video as, it, oh, it's going to 100% help you get it better at painting. Uh, it might actually help you get better in painting, but it's not going to suddenly make you better at painting. Uh, but hopefully it gave you enough pointers or enough um, information for you to understand the basics of it, how to, go, you know, how to go about doing it. A lot of digital painting, uh, when you're starting out, is just basically destroying the big chunks and the big complex shapes down into small, fewer, simple shapes. This arm is, you know, entirely constructed of cylinders except for the shoulder, uh, which is a huge sphere. But when you're starting out, you don't see that uh, in that way. You see it as something very scary and you just don't, you know, you don't want to get into that because you're not ready for the whole mortifying feeling of later on of, you know, not succeeding in painting the way you imagined it or the way you saw it on the internet. But I want to stress out, I guess if anything, if you have to learn anything from these videos, is that a lot of it is just hard work. And a lot of digital painting and all of the professionals have layers and layers of experience, knowledge, and hard work um, just under their belt. And they, if you do it every day, you'll eventually get to it. You'll, you'll learn how to do it and it won't be as hard anymore. But the things, you know, like watching my videos is not going to make you uh, any better. It might make a professional better because, you know, they're like, oh, I like this guy's technique. But he already has all the knowledge, uh, knowledge that you, you don't have, knowledge that I didn't have, and the knowledge that I'm still going to obtain. Um, but it's it all eventually comes down to how much you commit it to, to work. Uh, it's going to take some time. But you're definitely going to notice uh, some huge differences. And um, this is basically what I always try to teach. Is that it always comes down to, uh, to hard work. Where I can make videos. I can give you advices. Advices that I think would personally have helped me two years ago. Advices that are, you know, the a professional set. I watch a lot of videos. A lot of the things I said are not original. They're things that were said by Fang Zhu or Mark Burnett. Those are things that I'm just passing on, the knowledge that I have learned. I never took credit for anything, but uh, not even Mark Burnett, Fang Zhu, no one can teach you anything if you don't actually grab the pen and you do it yourself. There's never an excuse. So... I hope this video did help you, uh, you know, get into that uh, thought of how you could approach digital painting. Uh, try to, you know, disassemble complex shapes into simple ones. This arm is, for instance, been made completely out of cylinders. And if you just be, you know, if you're just able to analyze that, see it, digital painting process becomes much, much easier and much more enjoyable that way. Uh, so with that, you know, in mind. Uh, let's go on to the to the whole checking of what we succeeded today and then we'll see a couple of final words and that will be it for this video. So here we are at tier 2, uh, again our little objectives for the day uh, and let's see what we've completed. So simplifying a complex shape, uh, we, we took an arm, you know, a line out of an arm and we kind of threw it apart into a sketch of the, you know, the simplest form of arm possible. And we saw that it's basically the entire arm is created of cylinders. So that kind of helps us to already begin to think how the arm is going to. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be shaded like you would a square uh, or a cube, not a square. Um, it's not going to be shaded like you would a sphere. It's going to be shaded like you would a cylinder. So you already start to direct yourself in the right direction. You're saying, oh, okay, so this is how I will approach. 
and then we analyze the complex shape. You put, you know, let's say, a muscled arm, like huge muscles on an arm, and you start to analyze, okay, what do these muscles look like the most? Well, a lot of them look like basically cylinders just layered on top. And then you're starting to think, okay, so if the entire arm is made of cylinders, and if the little muscles are created of cylinders, all I have to do is shade each individual um basically muscle in a shape of a cylinder and eventually it'll come through with some tweaking and you know after you've done the whole basic thing you go and advance it a little bit you start to upgrade your shading you just tweak the light a little bit at bounce light and just with a lot of experience detailing you're gonna get what you see and uh, you know what you see in professional works so everything today uh, we've talked about uh, it has been done. It's been all completed. We can check all of these. And I think that this entire um, tier two is one huge success. I do hope that you came as far as uh, as completing this arm. Uh, I love doing these kind of videos. I want to do more uh, weekend courses, but this, this weekend course is not over yet. We have another video tomorrow. Uh, I hope you'll come back. I hope you learned something. Again, sorry for the long videos. This one was shorter than the one yesterday. Uh, we just had to get into the entire thing. Um, I know it's difficult. I know that if you're watching this video, uh, maybe you're struggling with digital painting. But I, I want to let you know that it's always, it's gonna, you're going to improve and it's going to get better if you just put the time in it. If you ever need any kind of question, don't be afraid to comment in the comment section below. Write what you want to see, write what you don't understand, maybe one answered. Uh, and remember, it's not about the tools, it's not about Photoshop or Vacom. You can have Genius Tablet with Paint Painter or Paint Tool Sci or whatever, and just use that. Coral Painter, whatever. Uh, I actually think that Coral Painter is a vector program, not that I think about it. Um, but anyways, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you put a time necessary to, to actually able to succeed this. Uh, I don't want this video to turn into a motivational speech because I'm very bad at giving those. But I do hope that it motivates you in, you know, grabbing a pen and doing it and seeing it's not that difficult if you just take the time to learn it. So with that in mind, I hope you liked the video. I hope the video helped you and that you pulled some useful knowledge off of it. And I guess I'll see you in the next one, which is tomorrow. All right, stay classy. And I'll see you. Bye. See how it's getting now brighter. Um, and, but there is still this, I guess, um, I guess this stripe of dark.